item to address the hospital board to turn over the speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in the meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard towards the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, or other persons seeking hospital contracts awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation for bid, request for proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel compromised of representatives of the board, the medical staff, administration, and legal counsel to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not entertain comments on or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. Mr. Henry, are you on webcam? Mr. Henry's here, yes. Okay. Um, I just Thank you. That Mr. Henry has an excused absence from being uh, present in our meeting personally today for his health reasons. Also, as the pandemic remains unstable, we have some extra precautions regarding seating. Finally, we continue to streamline our meeting process to avoid non-essential items from our consideration. And so next on the agenda, I have approval of orders of the day. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say yes. yes. Any opposed? Yes. Motion passes. Next, I have approval of the minutes of the meeting of February 22nd, 2022. And I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say yes. yes. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda are board reports for which there are no reports today. Then we have our medical staff report. I note that there are no reports from the hospital medical staffs, but the board wants to thank both the SMH Sarasota and SMH Venice medical staff members for all that they have done and all they continue to do to help keep our community safe and healthy, especially over the last two years. And so thank you very much. Clap, clap. <laughs> Uh, next on the agenda is our secretary's report. Greg Carter, secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in April 18th, on Monday, in our next board meeting at 9 o'clock, we'll be in the Michigan Planning Committee. At 10.30 until noon, we'll be calling the committee. From noon until 2.30, oh, I'm sorry, 12.30, and noon, closed session of the hospital board meeting. From 12.30 till 2 p.m. is board lunch with the issue and financial review. And from 2 until 4 p.m. will be the board meeting. Madam Chair, this is Gerald, if I might have a second. Okay. Yes, Gerald, I didn't hear that. Uh, yes, thank you. I wanted to say I heard the thank you to the staff and the, and the medical providers, but I want to say a sincere thank you from my observation to my fellow board members. The time it takes you to do this is a lot, and you're and it's very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, Gerald, and thank you for your support of the board. Um, next on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Joseph Deaver Julio, treasurer. One item this morning is the approval of the bed, debt, and charity care. I move approval of the bed, debt, and charity care for the month ending February 28, 2022, to the amount of $18,762,000. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you, Joe. 
Next, we have our financial highlights with William Walton, Chief Financial Officer. Please go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Here are the highlights for you. So, revenue for the system in the rating agency format for the month of February, 122 million.
Uh, we discussed the long term incentive component of the president's compensation. And discussing the success of the LTI, which was work put in place in December 2018 to incentivize the on time and on budget completion of the system's two marquee capital projects the SMH Venice Hospital and the Cancer Tower of Brian D. Johnson uh, Cancer Institute. The board, determined, the board determined to implement a three year LTI with the goals to be determined at a later meeting. Next, the board reviewed the scope of those projects required by the policy to be brought to the board for approval in light of the larger scale of the system and the increased cost for capital projects. At this time, I move approval of amendments to the board's capital approval policy 00.fin.44 to change the threshold for projects requiring board approval from those projects greater than $1 million to those that are $2.5 million or greater, as recommended by the Governance Effectiveness Committee. Second. So we have a motion in the second. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That is all. Thank you, Joe. Next on the agenda is our Finance Committee with Sarah Lodge Chair. Thank you. The minutes of the meeting of the Joint Audit and Finance Committees on January 24, 2022 were approved. Next, we had Bill Wojan, CFO, presented a proposal to change the capital approval policy to state that if the project is approved by a committee and or the approval permits expenditures for reasonable and unexpected costs not to exceed 10% above the approved projected amount. The annual rate of inflation is currently running above 7%. Changing the policy to 10% will provide some margin for inflationary impacts. At this time, I move to approve an amendment to the board's capital approval policy 00.fin.44 to, to change the additional approval thresholds in this policy from 5% to 10% above the approved project amount, as recommended by the Finance Committee. We have a motion and second. All in favor say yes. yes. Opposed? Motion passes. Continue, Sarah. Thank you. Next, we have Diane Settle, VP of Revenue Cycle, updated the committee on the Health Care Price Transparency Act and the No Surprises Act. She reported that we have posted the required information on SMH.com and are complying with all requirements of the Price Transparency Act, and that we have posted signage and development forms in compliance with the No Surprise Act. More regulations regarding the No Surprises Act are anticipated to be released on July 1st, 2022. There's no motion necessary. This is for informational purposes only. Okay. Does that enter report, Sarah? No. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, next, we had Tom Bennett, controller, presented the district's credit profile as of September 30th, 2021 and graphs showing historical trends of our financial ratios. For many ratio metrics, the district is performing significantly better than a median metric of similar graded healthcare systems. Once again, no motion necessary. This is for informational purposes only. Next, we have is Bill Bojan, CFO, updated the Finance Committee on a report, on a recent report from Moody's Investment Services on their outlook for not-for-profit not and public healthcare services. Moody's outlook for the industry remains negative as they expect expenses growth and driven by nursing shortages and increased labor costs. The outpaced revenue and resulting in a decline in operating cash flow. No motion necessary for, for informational purposes only. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we had Tom Carrigo, Director of Architecture and Construction, presented requests to approve rankings for design and general contracting services for schematic level documents of the Education and Research Building. A public meeting was held to hear presentations from five design teams and five general contracting teams. The rankings are recommended from the selection committees after hearing presentations. At this time, I move approval of the rankings of the architects and engineering and general contractors for the Education and Research Buildings as recommended by the Public Selection Committees and the Finance Committee as follows. For architects and engineers, one, Christian Smith, Code Red, Kate Thurston, two, EYE Architects, Code Red, three, Kate Lawson Surgery, Group Architects Incorporated, Code Red, Kate Surgery, one, Bar Bar, 
two, Governing Building Company, and three, Charles Perry Partners Incorporated. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. This concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Next, <clears throat> on the agenda, we have Human Resources Committee with Jim Meister, Chair. Please, Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Human Resources Committee met this morning. First, we had heard an environmental scan highlighting the human resources challenges and opportunities, including the need for 1,100 new staff for our growing system and competitive labor market. We discussed the incredible growth that we have already, that has already taken place, going from 4,920 people to 7,705 employees in the past seven years, matching our buying increases in the projected need go to almost 10,000 employees over the next three years. After discussing our complex workforce dynamics, we discussed our staffing needs as a system. The committee then discussed top priorities for HR industry-wide and our strategic strategies to support them. That concludes my report. Thank you, Jim. Next, we have the President's Report with David Berenger, our President and CEO. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to start my report like I do each and every month and look at our organizational report card. Um, what you see is you have five areas of focus um, on the left hand side, then goal in the middle, and then finally what, what our score um, or ranking is. So I'll start with the first um, area of focus is service. We have our likelihood of recommending having um, eight out of ten of our service areas be greater than or equal to the 75th percentile. Uh, we are right on top of that at 8 out of 10, and I'll show you the detail on that in here in a minute. In the people section, uh, we have uh, our new hire retention, which is our percent of regular or full part-time employees hired in FY 2022 that are still employed as of September 30th, 2022. We have a goal of having 83% of these um, still employed here. Uh, we are exceeding that um, at 90.03%. In the quality section, we have our, our, our goals to have our infection prevention, which is our combined overall standardized infection rate, be less than 0.85. I'm uh, happy to report we are exceeding that at 0.75. Um, and just to remind the committee of the board, uh, the is the expected or the national average, so we're already setting our goals uh, significantly lower than that. In the finance area, we, you've already heard from our CFO, the Wojcian. Um, our goal is to have our operating margin uh, meet our budget. The goal is to have uh, a 5.5% operating margin. Uh, we are just a little, we're projecting a little bit short of that right now at 5.4%. And finally, in growth, we have two, two areas that we look at. One is uh, inpatient uh, admissions and observation outpatients. We have a goal of hitting 60,119. We are just slightly projecting slightly ahead of that at 61,719. And then finally, in our outpatient registrations, we have a goal of having uh, 1.125 million outpatient registrations. We are a little, we're projected to be a little short of that right now at 1.108 million. Looking at the detail of the patient experience report card, this is our likelihood of recommending, and you see the 10 areas that we um, survey. Uh, in the middle column, you see what our score is uh, for uh, fiscal year to date. You see the next column over the national median score, and finally the score that we compare ourselves to is the 75th percentile. We had um, two areas that, that did not meet the 75th percentile, rate one being radiation oncology, the other being first physicians group. Uh, and radio, as you can tell, radio, radiation oncology uh, fell a point short of the national median score as well. Uh, I will point out that they still have a score at 95, uh, so it's a very tight uh, scale there. And, and I would imagine any time you get a survey back, it's not a five out of five. You're gonna you're gonna see that um, list. Uh, but I will tell you, the team take, takes it very seriously and uh, continues to, to um, uh, do all they can to keep the scores up and get you know, across the threshold. 
little good news. SMH makes Newsweek's best hospital list for a fourth year in a row. Sarasota Memorial was recently recognized among the world's best hospitals in Newsweek's fourth annual global um, ranking. In collaboration with global market research uh, and consumer data company, Newsweek recognizes the best medical institutions across 27 countries, including 414 hospitals in the United States. SMH has made the list four years in a row and is the only hospital in Southwest Florida to ever make the list since the global rankings began in 2008. SMH expands its visitation to COVID patients. Sarasota Memorial is now allowing a limited number of visitors to COVID-19 patients. Our full visitation policy is posted on our website, smh.com. Since COVID will likely be with us for the foreseeable future, it's important to bring COVID patients and their loved ones together when, when it's safe to do so. Visitors are asked to follow certain uh, safety precautions. We will continue to review our COVID policies and protocols and ease of tightening them in the weeks ahead based on the latest data and expert guidance. We have a prominent colon and rectal surgeon uh, who's joining First Physicians Group um, um, in uh, Right away, so he's already joined. Sarasota Memorial has recruited Dr. Sam Aguilar, um, the nationally recognized colon and rectal surgeon, and pioneer in single incision robotic surgery to lead the new division of colon and rectal surgery in, in the first physician street network. Dr. Aguilar specializes in the advanced surgical treatment of rectal and colon cancers, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. Prior to joining FPG, Dr. Aguilar uh, led a robotic colorectal surgery team at the Cleveland Clinic in Florida and served on the clinical teaching faculty. So please put the same record welcome into the air. Advanced robotic te uh, technology and reduced memory and basic spine surgeries. SMH recently welcomed the, the arrival to the orthopedic team. The Globus um, Excelsis GPS is a robotic surgical assistant designed facilitate learning the basic spine procedures. Our surgery team at the SMH Sarasota campus was recently trained in this new technology. I want to take a minute and uh, recognize our CFO, um, Bill Wojcian. We sent out uh, an announcement system-wide that he's going to retire at the end of this year. But Bill has served as our uh, Sarasota Memorial, as, has served Sarasota Memorial since 2007. First as treasurer and then as the CFO beginning back in 2010. He's been an outstanding steward of our finances, playing an instrumental role in developing strategies to help ensure sustainability of the healthcare system and its public mission. We are incredibly thankful to Bill's strong, steady leadership and his dedication to the organization and our community. Bill plans to stay on through December 31st, 2022, and will continue to complete. Uh, critical projects, including our budget for the fiscal year 2023. Uh, we are currently have a search underway for his succession. Uh, we, are, we know he will help in the uh, school for transition. Before he advances the slide, I just want to know we have a long time to, to say thank you, you know, because you're not leaving for nine months or whatever that number is now. Uh, but um, not only have I had the privilege of working with Bill um, since uh, 2007, so about 15 years now. Uh, he's become a, a dear friend of mine as well. Uh, somebody that everybody in this organization relies uh, a tremendous amount on. And I think this, not only this hospital is for, but this whole community owes you a debt of thanks for everything that you've done. Yeah. Certified Nurses Day honors those nurses who contribute to better patient outcomes 